Uh, what is up, everybody? And welcome back to Other Direct Indie Town, episode uh, 20 and 21 of Fate uh, Zero. Um, so what is going on? Let me just boom. You're like, wow, 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 what's going on? It's the comments. Yep, we've been here before. So these are some of the comments from episode the 1819 group episode um, that I want to respond to. The TLDR for those last two episodes is basically uh, flashbacks. I mean, a flashback arc, right? So we got him killing his dad and then him killing his mom. Yeah, that's just how it really goes for him. Poor guy. You, you, your boy's been suffering a bit in his, uh, he, he's got a dramatic backstory to say the least, right? Um, but yeah, so I'm gonna just blitz, just blitz through some of these. Uh, somebody else says this too, but the episode aired on Mother's Day is crazy, by the way. Um, I think somebody else lit it right here. First episode aired on Father's Day and the other on Mother's Day. Like, why would they do that? <laughs> that's just mean, is it not? Is that not just mean? And it's like, if I hadn't, like, this this isn't the first time this is, I've seen this kind of thing either, is the crazy thing. Like, if I had a nickel for every time an anime had traumatic events happen at, in certain airing dates with Father's Day, Mother's Day, I'd have two nickels, you know? Um, but, let's actually get into the meat and potatoes of everything, okay? So, this is incredibly cool. You're probably saying, what do you mean this? This is like an entire essay. Agreed, but it's lit. This is, in, this is very cool. Um, Garden of Sinners reference. This, that is so cool. Literally, the guy, because I remember him, he was like the fire mage right here. He was the guy who wore red in a top hat. Oh, no, no, well, you're talking about in Garden of Sinners. In episode, what, nine, or 18? Yeah, 18, when they were purging the village, and they, there was like the fire magic and all that stuff going on, there was the blonde dude. You know what I mean? He was the guy from Garden of Sinners 5, and I didn't recognize him in the slightest. Because your boy's seen the Garden of Sinners movies, all except like that, I think I'm a... And I think I have like two more to go or something, but they're like the little tail end ones. I've seen all the main ones, right? And so for a homeboy to be in this and me not notice is crazy. I think the really funny thing is I didn't notice probably because he was he was not acting how he was acting in Garden of Sinners. And I'm not going to spoil that. Go watch Garden of Sinners. I really, you know, those are some fire movies. Um, but yeah, that's just, that's just super cool. And then even more in the light novel, um, Toko is, is... Uh, called upon by Kaneth or Archibald, right? Archibald, Archibald, um, to maybe, to maybe, so he wanted a new body. He wanted a doll body, right? So those are both super, super cool. Um, and I really, really like that. Uh, apparently Dead Apostles is a thing, is a thing in one of the sister series, which is cool. I haven't seen that sister series. So that's kind of a, like, you know what I mean? Like thumbs up. Um, Bram, bram, bram. Kiritsugu's dad is mentioned to have a ceiling designation, which means they want to rip out his nervous system, magic circuits, and etc., and put them in a jar to study. That's kind of crazy. Ayozaki also has that from Garden of Sinners. That's kind of crazy times two. Uh, it's it's that's even crazier because that makes me think of one of the Garden of Sinners movies specifically, right? Um, and I'm being vague. I think if you know, you know, right? But that's really scary. It, it makes it really recontextualizes the mage association itself. Right? Which is not like, like, in the beginning, you know, you might think like, oh, these are like, you know, the good, like, maybe they're like the good people doing magic or whatever, or whatever, but really they're not good. You get what I mean? Like, they're doing this crazy grail thing, right? They're doing, we got like people that are doing like the bug magic. We got like the association itself that apparently wants to like rip out certain people's nervous system to study them. They're more so just like, neutral, right? Or maybe even kind of willing to do whatever they want, or like it depends on which branch you're looking at. Um, yeah, and I think that just the brain thing is a really, really good example of like how cutthroat, I guess they are, how ruth ruthless they are when it comes to like, oh, this is a token of study. Your boy wants a piece of that pie. Um, bram, 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 bram. The origin stuff, I actually was, I did talk about when we first learned about Kuritsugu's origin. Um, I immediately jumped to Garden of Sinners because I had gotten far enough that it had made sense. Um, him having 28 left is really good to know. So he has plenty. I think that's more than enough for the rest of the, uh, the show. Um, and then also Spellcaster, blah, 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 blah. He, uh, he, Kuritsugu, is smoking the same pack that Toko smokes, bro. That's another reference. I love that again. Um, but yeah. So this is this was a really cool like little write up. I really appreciate it. Um, I think the, it's just so cool that Garden of Sinners is getting some rep. You know what I mean? Yeah, that just makes me so happy. Go watch Garden of Sinners, mm -hmm. and then go watch my reactions to Garden of Sinners. And yeah, here's another one here. Right? I always thought the blonde mage using fire magic looked a bit like Cornelius from Garden of Sinners Five. That's because it is him. That's just crazy, man. The crossover, bro. The crossover. Um, and then yeah, I would always give waiver six inches. True. 
Um, this flashback uh, right here, I recommend watching parts of episode one again where Kide learns about Emiya and tries to judge his character. Um, I think referring to this, right? Just the, when he, when he shot down an entire jetliner. Yeah, so I think other comments kind of pointed that out. Um, crazy. I, I should have written that in my notes. I didn't realize it would be so incredibly relevant. Because if, dude, if I had that clocked, then as soon as, as soon as she got on the plane, I would have known she was dead. That's crazy. That's crazy. Um, but yeah, this is about Archibald and Lancer and kind of trying to judge Lan or Archibald or not. Um, first off, so right here, in fairness to Archibald, Lancer has a curse of love. It's automatic. He can't control it. And it was cl clearly affecting Archibald's wife. I did not realize that. Um, cause he definitely had like, I thought he was just that hot. Am I wrong for that chat? I thought he, I thought it wasn't a curse of love. I thought it was literally just like, he has that much riz that he can't help, but like women fall for him. But I think it actually, it seems to be actually like an actual like magical effect as opposed to just that he's hot. So that does, that is kind of an interesting point though. Um, there is like, put, this kind of goes back and forth a little bit, right? Um, these two commenters, but I, I did read through the back and forth here. So, but you know, even with the curse of love, arguably, um, Sola should, was able to resist that and like let herself be affected, blah, blah, blah. It sounds like there's like an entire thing going on there, right? Uh, and then kind of like another, like an Archibald defense again. Um, I don't think that's a fair assessment to make here. I mean, Archibald has Archibald done anything crazy evil, at least in Fate Seer. The worst thing he did was kill the Overseer, um, blah, 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 blah. Archibald just, he's just, maybe it's just a characterization thing. He is just from the beginning kind of been characterized as like mean guy that likes hurting people. You know what I mean? Like, or like he, like, I don't know about likes hurting people, but he like, he gets off on dominating people pr proving his dominance i think he gets off on proving his dominance right so we see that at first with waiver and then we kind of you know whenever he's like talking he's always kind of doing one of these you know he he just he just comes across as like a cartoon evil villain right and when you actually it's crazy when you actually zoom out a bit and try to compare him to other characters like i don't know like a gilgamesh or like like a like a freaking um Ryanosuke or like emia if you want to get really crazy with it then like how much worse is he than other people? I, you know, I, you know, not that bad, maybe. Um, but the thing is, I think a lot more of the characters are, are kind of quote unquote evil than I would originally have said at the beginning, right? I just feel like Archibald has always had, like, even if you are trying to like, if you want to be super careful and like go through and try to judge all of his actions and tally up what he's done, maybe he doesn't look that bad, but his characterization, it feels like he's supposed to be the evil guy. You know what I mean? Um, so I've always just kind of been there and then he hasn't proven me wrong ever, right? It's always been like, he's always kind of backed up his like mustache twirling behavior. So I've always just kind of kept that, right? Um, and yeah, like he hasn't, pro I, he hasn't made me want to defend him. You know what I mean? Um, but yeah, ba -da 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 -dum. I'm trying to make sure there's nothing else in here I wanted to reply to. My point was that he had some positive qualities, not that he's a moral bastion. Yeah, I mean, that's fair, right? Uh, especially compared to your average mage who thinks nothing nothing of using orphans as a mana battery source. That's the they, and that's the, the big realization I was kind of talking about earlier, where it's like, bro, these mages are crazy overall. Like, like even the nice mages, I don't even know how much I trust when it comes to, like, basic human rights, you know, that much. So, yeah, I, I would still... Yeah, I, instead of making, instead of saying that Archibald's a, like an okay person, I'd probably say, drag everybody down to his level more than vice versa. Um, but yeah, so that's cool. Big thumbs up. Um, I still don't, I still think he's evil. He's also dead, so who cares? Omega lol. You know what I mean? Like, bra 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 bra. Oh no, Archibald might be a good guy. Bra. You know what I mean? That's that's the real situation there. Um, <laughs> we are gonna we are gonna look at the English version of the MES scene. I have it pulled up. This then this kind of last or second to last kind of comment thing here is a double again, where Kritsugu Emiya arguing that Emiya's dumb and he's a maximalist who only likes murder. The thing is, I like and I, I we don't have the read more because this is a freaking I you know I got people picking out these comments for me because spoiler warnings right. But the so my bad if I like miss something in here that is like better better argument. But basically the idea like um. First, when he kills his dad, I think that's extreme, but I don't think anybody would blame him for that, right? Um, even the commenter here kind of agrees with it, right? But Kirisugu is a traumatized child, so instead of understanding that it was a one-time incident, he just kills his dad. However, this one is still understandable, and I won't say I blame him for that. Agreed. And I agree with that. Him killing his mom, 
Um, I think what the argument made is that she could have, like, landed the plane. There could have been, like, another way out or whatever. Uh, the thing is, she didn't... Correct me if I'm wrong, but she didn't say she was going to do any of that. Did she? Well, did she? Maybe she did, actually. You know what? Let's pull it up. Um, I think... Didn't she say, like, I have no idea what I'm doing. Um, do you have any ideas? Like, help me out. Wasn't she, like, actually asking for help? And then he was like, oh, don't worry, homegirl. I got you. And then she bombed him. Yeah, she's saying, like, come on. All right, well, we'll see each other again. What? It's probably about time. Like, like the, the atmosphere in the air, I think, was that she was already kind of saying her goodbyes. You know what I mean? Like, I don't think she was confident. I don't think there was any confidence that, like, she was going to make it out, if you get what I mean. Or that if she made it out, it would be a clean getaway. Um, and when I, so what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to defend. Let me just be very clear with what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to say that him bombing the plane seems pretty reasonable to me. That's what I'm trying to do. Um, I think that was actually a pretty okay move. I think because like could she have landed on the water? Maybe, but if she messes that up, things could get really bad. Just a small mistake can have literally like city-ending consequence if it like. You have a new zombie outbreak in a city, right? We saw what that did to a village. Imagine what that could do to a city, you know? Uh, and so, you know, like, plane lands, and then a bunch of Coast Guard come to, like, check it out, right? What are you going to do if one of them get bit by one bee that survives, right? It's kind of the same issue again. You'd have to, like, torch the entire thing and then hope that none got out and are, like, living on a freaking life raft or freaking whatever, right? I don't know. What if it infects a bird? Can a bird become a zombie? I don't freaking know, man. So when it comes to, like, all the unknowns, I'm really, like, I don't mind bombing her. I'm fine with that move, personally. I think it's, it's, I think it's the right move. Yeah. Am I crazy for that? I kind of don't think I am. Um, and then the, I think the last, the last point is more of one of, like, uh, Emiya killing Archibald being, like, overly brutal. The thing with that, again, is I, like, he needed to kill Lancer. That's the, that's the most important part. Like, because this comment says here, because his methods serve, serve no purpose, he doesn't have to go for the most brutal method to kill Lancer and his masters. He chooses to. Um, and not because of effectiveness, because using a sniper rifle would have been much more effective. I I disagree with that because of Lancer. I don't think you could kill Lancer. I don't think he could kill Lancer in, like, almost any way. Like, bullets aren't enough to, like, dude, remember Saber was literally running on water with jet planes going, blah, 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 like, all over her, right? I think you could probably take a sniper life rifle, lower it to freaking Lancer's head, and pop him, and I don't think that would kill him. It'd probably hurt him. But, like, I kind of think they're really just that durable and that strong in the in the rough power scaling in all my, like, head, right? Um, Because at one point, I don't remember exactly the scene, but I thought to myself... Okay, bullets aren't enough. Bullets aren't enough to deal with Holy Spirit or the uh, the spirit, heroic spirits, right? And so, in that way, the whole Lancer kill yourself move is the best way to get Lancer to die. Because if you put, if you just, he, the, what's the, I think the only other alternative would be for Saber to kill Lancer, right? In which case, he would have to trust Saber to win the fight without taking any like substantial like permanent damage or anything like that, right? Um. And instead of going for the, he trusts himself more than he trusts Saber. Why would he trust Saber? He doesn't like heroes or whatever, right? Um, and it's a duel, so that's not like that's a, even close to a guarantee. Whereas him getting Archibald to do the suicide thing, I mean, that is pretty much a guarantee. You know what I mean? Like, he really played it well. Um, yeah. Because you could, yeah, yeah. It's just because I think the argument is that he's not going for the most effective nut stuff. Um, he's going extra edgy, extra, extra brutal, brutal in some sort of like, I'm the bad guy, you know, I do what I must martyr, martyr sense. But I, I don't know. I, I wouldn't agree with that right now, unless there was a, somebody like had a plan that was better than what Emiya did. You know what I mean? That was like as effective of what, as what Emiya did. Um, yeah. It is funny though. Him, yeah. I mean, literally just going all over Archibald and his wife was pretty, pretty brutal. Though I mean, that is pretty quick. But he also he's a little bit of a dick. Okay, I mean, he is a little bit of a dick because he did mock Archibald when Archibald was like, "Kill me, please." And I mean, was like, "I can't." Fun fact. That's pretty. That was a pretty dick move. So you know, I could get onto him there. I think that's just you know, that's him being a little spicy. But 
I don't know. I'm kind of an Emiya defender right now. I really kind of am an Emiya defender. Uh, I think he's... I don't... I, I think I agree with his intention. The only problems I would, I would have, as I've said before, is his execution. But I think he really is intending to be as effective as possible. Um, and that's beca because he fe I think he feels pretty tortured about it, you know? Whether... And you could view that as a martyrdom thing. I don't know. I, I view it in a better lens, but it is kind of hard to say. Uh, and then last thing... Kind of on that question I threw out about, like, is love a redeemable quality? I think th this was a super interesting, like, cross-character look uh, between Castor and Gilgamesh. I keep saying Castor because his freaking full name's hard to say. Like, Gilis de Ramenan or whatever. Um, Gilis de Rice, right? But Castor and Gilgamesh, where... So this comment says... Wait, one second. <clears throat> oh, okay, uh, excuse me. <laughs> Thank you, chat. This comment says, take Gillis, for example, he's incredibly evil, but you can still sympathize with him. He's still obviously unforgivable, but being able to understand his motives makes him more tolerable, IMO. Um, whereas with someone like Gilgamesh, it feels a lot more despicable, right? So, I, I don't know. This is a super interesting, like, cross-comparison. I think for me, personally, I would prefer a Gilgamesh over a caster. I almost see caster as more despicable in a weird way. Well, that's probably not true. Despicable, despicable I'd probably give to Gilgamesh, but... Um, I, I kind of don't blame, like, I don't know. I kind of, I kind of like Gilgamesh, right? And I can, I can kind of sympathize with Gilgamesh as well. I think Gil, I think Castor's easier to sympathize with because like you kind of go on to say, he does come from a place of like delusional love, um, and like almost like Abaddon, right? Like religious Abaddon, um, plus delusional love, right? And so extreme like zealot level, anti-belief which is like a large part of like his god characterization or his like religious characterization you know i think people can somewhat understand like the existential angst that would feed into that and then obviously like being in love with somebody having strong emotions towards somebody everybody gets that that's that's super easy for people to sympathize with um whereas gilgamesh being like above it all and seeing everybody as toys is probably less sympathizable right and that, that's kind of the point here right um I think the big question is, does that make Caster's, like, because you say at the end, um, Caster's intentions are significantly more pure, though his actions are not. Like, the intention of love, does that in and of itself have, like, a purity or good aspect that is different, w whereas the intention of Gilgamesh, like, entertainment doesn't have, right? Does Gilgamesh's desire to be entertained not have a good quality that Castor's desire to love does have. You know, it's a big question. I would, I, the thing is, I don't, I don't know. Is love in and of itself a good thing? I don't really think so. I don't think so. Um, whoa, am I becoming freaking Kant? Oh no, I don't like deontology. Wait a second. Uh, morality. Uh oh, uh oh, ethical theories. They're all falling apart. Um, yeah. I don't know. I just, I think sympathy, the, like, it being more sympathetic for me doesn't mean it's go more good. Uh, more understandable, yes. So I can get the point, and I really like the point. Um, but I would, I guess the word pure scares me a little bit. I think I'm a little scared of the word pure, where, like, he has, oh, he has pure intentions. He's just messed up, right? Um, I guess it's kind of the, it's, hmm... Because, well, okay, maybe you're, okay, 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 let me, let me shift gears, let me shift gears, insanity plea, could you go for, like, like, is it almost like an insanity plea with Castor that you would go for, being, because you're using the words, like, delusional, and he's mistaking her for Joan of Arc, which is true, right, so maybe you could, because there is, I'm trying to think legally, yeah, I mean, if you are insane, which Castor's pretty much insane, then you are treated differently legally than if you aren't insane and still do bad things, whereas Gilgamesh would not be insane. So you know what? Maybe actually I've come around a bit. Maybe I've actually come around a bit. I was I was going into this comment thinking like I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of like pick it apart a little bit. I actually kinda like that a little bit. Um I would just I wouldn't say I would say it's a thing of I don't think Castor is like insane enough to overcome all the evil he's done i still think he's evil and unforgivable and all those things but i think the delusional aspect of his character because he is frighteningly delusional in a, in a couple ways does make it make him seem like a small it's like he's a small amount of victim of his insanity you know what i mean whereas gilgamesh isn't a victim of anything yeah
Mm. It's a really interesting, yeah, that's a really interesting kind of argument that I have to think through. The thing for me, let me, I'm going to start to pull up the, the, the episode, or I want to pull up the, uh, the sound, the English dub of Emiya. The thing for me about morality is I've pretty much given up on it in a lot of ways. I think it's just a bunch of made up mumbly jumbly that we like, you know, almost like an aesthetics thing or something where it's just like, oh, it makes me feel good. I think a lot of it's like post hoc. Um, so like, if you want my actual answer on morality, it's different. You know what I mean? But when it comes to kind of trying to view it in a more typical sense, it's, it is a really fun question to ask, but okay. This is the English dub for Emiya. Um, in this scene, I'm just going to play, let the scene kind of fully play out. It's going to be about a minute and then I'll, I'll try to go through on the YouTube version and uh, buff the audio. Shout out the Patreon. If anyone watching up there, full audio, full video, you know what I mean? I just a quick little plug, but yeah. Um, let me just play this. We're 1904 in episode 19, three, two, one, bang. The English. <laughs> the only thing left for me to do would be to really act like a mother, I guess. Oh, <laughs> Wait, she kind of cooked with that line. I might need to run it back to hear her a little bit more. I kind of liked her voice there. The seagulls are a metaphor of his village, by the way. We need to hear the breakdown. That's going to be the big thing for the English. <laughs> See if he cooks. Oh, wait, shoot. They're doing a flashback. Now I'll just let it play. Just let it play out. <laughs> she, I love how she corrects his gun aim. That's actually adorable, bro. Not even looking. She's just like, come on, buddy. And she really says game respect game, bro. She was real. Okay, let me shut up. Breakdown time. I killed someone again. Just like I did with my dad. I didn't screw up like I did with you. I saved an awful lot of lives. If Natalia had landed that plane safely, there's no telling how many people might have died. I like it so far. I'm liking it so far. Surely. I... <laughs> shut your mouth! Just shut up! Bastard! <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> I kind of like that. Wait. He kind of cooked. I kind of like that English dub, actually. I... I won. And then he's yapping again. Yeah. No, I kind of like that, actually. I kind of like that. Him going, um, I think the best part for me, you could, like, let me find it. He's so right here. I... So I... Surely, I... Right there, ooh, 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 <laughs> bro. Wait, he's cooking on this one, bro. The VA actually cooked. Actually, I think this was actually good. Bro, you can, him, he like, he gets quieter and you can hear it like, it, it, it's not like nasally, but like, you can hear it in his throat. That last one, that, huh? Right? It's so, it's like, he's not even trying to speak anymore. It's just kind of falling out a little bit. Dang, wait, I actually really liked the English dub for this. The big screaming, it's like, you know, that's about is what it is. But like the smaller moment leading up to it, I think he actually kind of ate. Right there, like, uh, you can you can hear it, it's like he's about to cry, right? You can really hear it though in his throat. Even right there, you can that's like in his chest. And then he starts yamming. That's fair, yeah. Speak your truth. Okay, wait, I actually kind of really like that. Okay, good one. Oh, and then I wanted to hear, I wanted to hear, um... Her dialogue a bit more before she dies. Can I do this 
That's such a death flag. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so bad. Weren't working. <laughs> the only thing left for me to do would be to really act like a mother, I guess. Ooh, I just like how she gets so soft. It gets so soft. The, the the trail end of her sentence there gets really soft and quiet when she says like really, like act like a mother, I guess. That last little bit gets quieter. So good for it to get quieter because she's, you know, she's confident. She's a confident lady. She starts talking, but whenever it gets to that senti sensitive mat at the end, she gets a little quieter, a little softer about it because it's emotional. You know, she's laughing. She's chuckling. Ooh, but that last little bit, she she drops she drops a volume level, bro. That's so smart. Dang. Wait, me, listen, me only watching anime and dub because I feel like I can actually, like, talk about their voice performances where in japanese i literally can't tell half the time because it's another language so it's a lot harder for me to actually like pay like figure out what's going on with how good the performances are my goodness unless they're like screams because screams are a universal language holy crap chat but yeah i don't know bro i'm scared of emio a little bit emio is a and emio is a hard guy em, em, <laughs> he's a hard guy emio is a hard character to to really think about i think there was a really good I'm trying to remember what was said there was a really good like back and forth about emium that i forget where it came from it was either the discord or like one of the comments but um where or kind of kind of what the comment earlier was saying about like um well what if emmy like emmy uh, like world war one you know nukes poisonous gas like the kind of the brutality of war and saying that, like, Emiya's also, like, acting brutally i think that's probably a really good counter argument for emmy where it's like if he succeeds then, like, it was worth. But if he fails, then all he did was add a lot more suffering to the world, right? It almost feels like that could be a position with Emiya. And that's consequentialism, which I, I don't like. But, you know, if... Because that's, that's really the thing. He's doing evil in the name of a eventual good. But that's what most people that do evil think, I think. You know what I mean? I, I don't think a lot of people that do evil are thinking to themselves, oh, I'm the evil guy. They're thinking it'll be worth it. It'll pay off, right? But when you don't check yourself, when you don't balance yourself out and you let yourself snowball too far, then you will do so much evil and then it won't pay out and then you've just worsened everything, you know? That's the risk that Emmy is going into, right? I don't think it's that he'll become, like, he'll intend to do evil, but I think he'll lose himself in trying to do good. It's the, it's the classic, the road to hell is paved in good intentions, right? Absolutely the classic. Um, so that's that's mostly my worry with, with Emiya as opposed to anything else. Um, where I think he, I do kind of, I trust his intentions, I do think. I do think I trust his intentions. What would he wish for? I don't know. I'd love to hear it so I could actually like think about it before he, he actually like gets there because that's a entire question of like, well, but what's the grail gonna do, right? The grail, it, it, it does a wish. Or it goes to the root if you really want. But like, Emiya, what is what what could you do to fix things, you know? Um, because if you execute... Like, his intentions, I think, are good. But I, I'm scared of the execution. Especially because his intentions are so good that he thinks any, ex like, any attempt is going to be worth it, right? He doesn't... He's not letting himself be held back by anything because he is that devoted to his good intentions. But that means that he could do any amount of evil... And then if the good intentions don't pan out, then you're just really, you've really messed everything up. So it's, it's, it's brutal. I, I trust his intentions. I'm worried about his execution. Let's just put it that way. Um, but yeah, episode 20 should be exciting. I think we're going to be out of the flashbacks, which I'm kind of excited for because I did like the flashbacks, but like I'm invested in what's currently going on. You know what I mean? Like get me in there, man. So yeah, episode 20, let's see it's going in a three, a two, a one, bang. Uh, audio, 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 audio. It's in Japanese. Perfect. Subtitles? Perfect. All right, Emiya's at the door. Maya, give her a quick kiss. It's her girl. How's Eerie doing? Is Eerie dying? This is like where Eerie was dying, if I remember. Yeah, she's straight up taking a snooze. Okay. Don't hit me with the old P already, man. I'm like getting immersed. I'm like I'm like three steps in, bro. But um, Dang, I forgot about Saber but um, too. As an in character, bro. I've been just thinking about Emiya. I want more Saber action. I want more Gilgamesh action. 
I want more Iskandar action. I want more Waver action. All of them. Oh, I meant to say, the uh, seagulls. The seagulls surrounding him with the RPG when he shoots the RPG. Um, I think that might be like a reference to his uh, time on the island in episode 18. Because they, I think they had a lot of birds and seagulls there too. So it's like him being surrounded by the seagulls is as if to say that he is surrounded by all the people that died there. So when he shoots the RPG, he's thinking about all the people that died in that village that he could have saved, which are represented by the um, swarm of seagulls. They're almost like, um, they're almost like vultures, but instead of feeding on a corpse, they're feeding on the death of his humanity. Holy shit. My goodness, chat. Dang, I love women in suits. We're gonna, yeah, let's go away from trying to interpret like visual elements and just talk about interpreting uh, Saber's curves in that suit. You know what I mean? Lot to interpret there. All right. Ufootable. I thought that was Waver. I'm not even gonna lie. It's just Maya. Lastly, it's really that bad. Is that the sword? She's gonna die if she lets go of that sword. Yeah, she's done so. The sheath, rather. Nine whole years is crazy. That's about it, though. Like, oh, that's kind of sweet. I can't believe she's actually dying right now. It's really bad timing when it comes to the Grail War. Because she was kind of the fake master, remember? Why is Saber going there? I got good news for you. He's already dead. <laughs> or maybe bad news because... Bro, Eerie's dead. Uh, no, not yet? I don't, okay. I was about to say, you can't just start talking business after that talk with Eerie, bro. You gotta... Come on. You're just gonna ignore that comment? <laughs> yeah, let me go to writer's- let me go to writer's like, hideout. Literally suburbia. And Waver's at the grocery store. I love Waver so much. Bro's just at the grocery store. He is so stupid. Dude, Emmy is pulling out this crazy gun. Saber's pulling up, freaking Excalibur ready to summon at any time. S Waver's at Walmart, <laughs> like trying to decide what drink to buy. <laughs> this guy is so stupid. 
<laughs> I love Waver so much. <laughs> He's just a normal dude, bro. He's just... <laughs> Bro's eating his lunch, like... <laughs> oh my goodness. Is Ryder in, like, the spirit world? He's telling him to order different food, bro. He said you should have bought different food. <laughs> oh my goodness, it's so funny. Oh, recover. He okay from the fight, yeah. Smart. Wait, Waver's smart. He brought camping gear so to help him recover. Aw, Waver. Waver, that's so sweet. <laughs> no, Waver, Waver, clever little dog. Dude, I, I love Waver's game plan. It's literally just buff my, my guy and trust. Dude, Waver's in a giant ass sleeping bag in the middle of the day. Who is this guy? Bro, it's gonna be hot in there. Aw, he didn't want to. He didn't want to tax him too much. He cares about others, bro. Hmm. He's insecure and... Whoa. 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 I had no idea the, <laughs> the earth was around. It's so funny. Wow. You're worth more than a gamble. Life is worth more than a gamble. I love that. Iskandar just wins again, bro. Dang, bro's getting a little bit of an upgrade in this magic production. Okay, Waver. Okay. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, why don't we just have a fight saber? Thoughts? <laughs> Bro, no, you gotta be at 100% if you want to deal with Saber. Come on.
Ooh. It's my duty to defeat her? Oh. He wants to save her from her ideology, bro. It's kind of condescending, but like, I, I, I like it. I do like it. He wants to teach her that like, it's worth living life for life, you know? Doing that, doing your thing instead of being a slave to her ideals. Oh yeah? But are we doing a berserker nonsense? Dude, what just happened? I was having a good... I was having a good time with Waver, bro. What's going on? He's draining you of your... Is he draining you of your mana, like, while you're injured? That'd be crazy. Her? Who? Saber? Oh, we're about to get a reveal. Why are you chained up? Did Kire chain you up? Oh, you're back up with the Matows, okay. <laughs> this guy's such a dick. <laughs> Oh, an, a buff? You're giving him a buff? <laughs> weird. So weird. That's so strange. And that made it stronger? Wait, that buffed it? That's a buff? Oh, uh, guys, I guess she is the, uh, has really good blood. That's still so strange. Don't use the word purity, brother. Don't use the word purity. That's weird. What happened to you? <laughs> Wait, where did y'all meet? Wait, I need to know about your backstory. Wait, that scene was actually seven seconds long. We got seven seconds of Maya backstory. And that's all we're gonna get. Just kidding. Oh, you were a child soldier? That Emiya, like, didn't kill in, or saved in some way? He's about to find Homeboy's body, Tokiyomi's body. Maybe. I don't remember if what Korea did with it. Or, um... Or Kyure, I mean. All right, bit of a line there. He kind of repeated what his mom did with him, but with her, it seems. Mm. 
Yeah. He has discovered the blood. Very well said. She just admitted to being like a complete yes man, you know? I've just agreed with him the entire time and told him he's right. At least she admits it. All the fighting everywhere ceases. That's a really big wish. <laughs> I'm scared of that. Ooh. Okay, that, that makes sense. Yeah. She's trying to spare her daughter from what she's had to do. Yeah. Woo. That's ooh, okay. I like that. I don't expect to survive. Yeah, convince her that that's wrong. Sure. Just pick something, yeah. Yeah, bars. Why am I scared? I'm scared. I see Kira. Is Kira here? Why did I? I felt that one coming. I felt that in my blood, bro. I'm actually. I knew. I knew something was gonna about to go wrong. The dot dot dot. I was like, wait, we're about to get jumped, and I was right for. Oh, it was a Skondar. Okay, lit. That's totally fine. I mean, it's not. It's not Kira. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, we teleported her. Oh, wait, that's even better. Maya's hurt. Yuri's gone. Hello? What happened to you? Wait, what did Ryder just do? She, he just, wait, did he just like deck you, grab her and just leave? Cause that's kind of hilarious. Also that command spell is, that wasn't just a command, that was a teleport. That's a separate ability, brother. Cause she can't teleport. You know what I mean? So that's really interesting. You see him? Oh. <laughs> he just grabbed her and left? Wait, Ryder, what are you planning, my guy? 
We also haven't seen his face, and he's... I didn't see... Was he on his cart there? It kind of didn't look like his cart. But, like, I guess he would have done that. How hard are you? Oh. Okay, now Maya's dying. Oh my, dude, we keep losing characters. I can't believe she. Wait, wait, wait what, how did she die? She go. She just got smacked by the door. You can't waver now, waver reference. Yeah, yeah, I mean, they're talking like she's dead. I'm amazed, by the way. She, Dude, she just got... That is so depressing for her. Wait, that's like... Maya, you... Ryder kicks in the door, and then like a wooden beam like maybe decks her or something, and she's just dead. Maya, like... I don't know. Shit. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like... And then she just, I mean, and she goes out saying, like, cry for your wife instead, which is, like, referencing the, like, third wheel dynamic she has. That's, like, already another, like, ouch, you know, where it's, like, she doesn't even get to, like, kiss him goodbye or anything. It's literally just, like, cry for somebody else, and then she just dies. My goodness, Maya. I thought Eerie was the one that was supposed to die of his love interest. Oh, my goodness. Both of, of his love interests are gonna die. Then what is he gonna have to tether him to humanity anymore, bro? Oh no, he's gonna go full edge. It's actually gonna be over for Emiya. That's so crazy. Cause like, dude, the conversation she was having with Eerie of like, what I'm gonna do after the war. I mean, that's a, that is actually, that's totally a death flag, you know? Like, oh, go find your family, go do your stuff, you know? But I was thinking like, not even close to now. I need to rewatch this scene. I'm gonna rewatch this scene. I'm actually. I have to. I have to see what. I have to see what happened there. I don't know. I'm about to watch the next episode, so I don't need to see the thing. So wait, Maya, 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 Maya. We're just chilling. Did Ryder just fucking clock her at some point? Cause yeah, you really are dot dot dot. I get scared for no reason. Door gets kicked in. She pulls the Glock. And that is Ryder, yeah? I mean, it's... I'm trying to think. There's no way Kirei has, like, some sort of disguise magic. That is Ryder. He said he was going to go there, and then he showed up. That's clearly Ryder. Yeah? It's just weird. They didn't show us his face. And, like, he was going for Saber. I feel like there's some shenanigans going on. Because what Ryder really... I feel like it's... Wait, there's got to be shenanigans going on, right? Or am I trolling? Let me see. Yeah, he's not even... He's not even writing the thing. Wait, okay, this is weird. I don't know what's going on. But it's just got to be Ryder, yeah? I feel like there's shenanigans going on. Maybe I'm trolling. Maybe I'm just coping. It could very well be cope. But... They literally, his, his motive is to go fight Saber, right? And so I guess maybe he would grab Yuri and be like, I got your master, come fight me. You know, that could be a thing, I guess. But like, he doesn't even hover in the area at all. You know, I feel like he would have, if like, I feel like Ryder would have like kicked on the door and been like, where are you, Saber? And then like, you know, maybe waited a beat, but he doesn't even, he just grabs Yuri 
claw, like punches Maya or something to the point that she is unconscious in the middle of the room, you know, and she's got a like wounds in kind of a weird spot, like her back. She's been like cut or she's bleeding in some way. And Saber gets there within like 20 seconds. You know what I mean? So it's, it, yeah, it's it, or like 10 because he, she literally, the call happens. I'm going to count. F it. We're doing accounting. I don't even care. Okay. Dork at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. And she's gone. Yeah, so it's a literally, it's 20 seconds from him kicking in the door that Saber goes, becomes, like, in the area. And he's gone with Eerie, and he's not even using his thing. Like, what are you doing, brother? I thought you wanted to fight Saber. And what'd you do to the Maya? You just fucking, like, a bink! I'm feeling shenanigans, but I don't know why there would be. What does she... she, she uh... And it's weird. It's weird. This is... He can fly? I didn't know he could do this. I'm freaking out. I don't know what's going on right now. Because, no, it's gotta be him. Because they literally... He says he's gonna go over there. You know what I mean? And so, him going over there makes sense. I just feel like it's, it's a little weird for him to kill Maya. Is that wrong of me? And then... He gets... Okay, and then Emiya gets to Maya way later, and she dies in his arms. That's a rip. Um, uh, Rest in peace, I suppose. I mean, I really didn't expect you to die there, so I was, I was more so bewildered than anything else, I suppose. Man, maybe I should just jump straight into the episode instead of freaking, like, rambling. Just to... I just... I feel like there's... It's weird. It's just... I'm, I'm getting such weird energy right now. And it's either just that, like, my brain doesn't want to accept that she just is dead that fast, or there's actually shenanigans going. I think she is dead. I mean, she, she is dead. But the writer, the writer feels... Because he, well, okay, he, 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 writer, you did say, if I only use the Gordius wheel for only for flight, there shouldn't be a problem. But he's not even using it for flight. Nah, that's probably him. I don't know, bro. He's not using the wheel, though. He's just floating away. And we don't get to see his face. That's always a red flag. You know what I mean? It's always sus. Okay, let me explain why I feel sus so that people don't make fun of me if I'm wrong. Okay? The reasons I feel sus right now. Um, Ryder doesn't say a single thing. He doesn't wait for Saber. I think those are both a little weird, right? I feel like he usually is a little more, like, loud or whatever. But maybe he just has the plan. Let me kidnap the girl. Saber will come fight me. Whatever. But... I don't know. I feel like it's a little, little weird that he didn't really say anything. He just kicks in the door, right? Um, whatever. Other weird thing, we don't see his face at all, right? We see the back of his head, and we see, you know, this is all we get to see. So it's like, for us, the audience, it's, oh, that's clearly a Skondar. But we don't actually see a Skondar's face. Or, like, smile or anything. So it's, like, it's clearly a Skondar, but we're, we're like, not... We're, I feel like we're, like, missing a part of the piece. Because we... And then we see his back again here. So we see his back twice, and he's not using one of his abilities, even though here he surely would, would he not? Because he literally has a cart to transport things quickly. So if I'm trying to transport her, wouldn't I just transport her quickly with the cart? And so it's like, okay, well then, what what am I suggesting? By I'm obviously sussed out right now. I feel like this is sus. Also, killing killing Ir or, um, Maya because she wasn't in the way of the door, and I don't think she got. There's no way she just got decked by a wooden beam when she was trying to chase or something, right? I feel like she had to have been intentionally killed, you know, because she's bleeding from like like pools of blood from all over her other than just one big 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 hit in the head like she's bleeding from her shoulder too so i feel like she was targeted to be hurt as well maybe like because okay think about this maybe this is cope what if kirei has some sort of magic okay <laughs> everybody everybody in the comments right now just all face palmed at the same time no 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 listen what if kirei has some sort of like disguise illusion magic and then 
He kicked in the door. Why is he that strong? I don't know. Magic. He kicked in the door pretending to be Ryder. Kills Maya. But lets her live long enough that like, you know, whatever. And then escapes. And so it's like a fake. A fake attack by Ryder. That sounds like coping. But I'm just sussed. Alright, let's just jump to the episode. I don't know. I'm just... I feel so... It feels strange right now, man. And then Maya's just dead? You just get... Like... I don't know, bro. Let's just see what happens. I, I, I'm I I'm not trusting this situation, but I could very well just be wrong in reading into it too much. So let's just jump into episode 21. This case going in. A three, a two, a one. Bang. It's really... No, it's just gotta be... Wait, so... Now it's nighttime. It must have been... The sun must have been going down. But like, okay, so some a little bit of time... A time has passed... Because she's still chasing. Ryder, what are you doing, man? Hostage? Hostage? Or is our Really, man? You know? What are you cooking? Or are you Kyrie in disguise? There's no way. that I don't know if that kind of magic exists. That's kind of my problem. Because if that kind of magic exists, I could, ver I could see Kyrie thinking it's hilarious to pretend to be Ryder... Come in, kill, kill freaking Maya, but let her live long enough that that homeboy gets to, to watch her die and then leave with Eerie. I feel like he would find that hilarious right now because he's kind of unhinged now, but I don't know if that type of magic exists. Because imagine like she's chasing him and then Gilgamesh comes out of nowhere and then like fights her and then he reveals to be, you know, that could be an entire thing. It's just, yeah, I don't know. I'm just getting sus vibes from Ryder. I just, um, um, otherwise Maya, I guess rip. What a sad way to go out. I'm sorry. It's just depressing. If you go out, door gets kicked in, you get off screen injured and then you die. Like, like Maya, what happened girl? I need, there's gotta be some other piece of the puzzle here. Let's see. Heroic energy spirit at juice coming out the back. She's zooming. Like, yeah, this is weird. Ryder, why, why, why would he not be using the thing? I'm so sus right now. I'm either I'm the G, I'm a genius or I'm insane, okay? What's the difference anymore? That's the wrong way on traffic. You're causing so many people to swerve and crash. Saber, think about it. Can you sense him? Because you should recognize by sensing, yeah? No, he's coming this way. It's different. I'm right. It's different. Because he wasn't using the chariot, and that's a different rider. Holy crap. Holy crap, chat. Because, <laughs> look. Yeah, it's a different... There's a fake rider running around. It's 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 cute. It's probably Kirei. I mean, it could be Berserker Loki, but I think it's Kirei. Right? Oh, no, are you going away? Yeah, nah. Nah. Because Waver wasn't with him. Waver wasn't with him. It's, 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 it's there's a fake there's a fake rider, bro. Saber's good at riding. Okay, good to know. I'm keeping that in mind for later. Yeah. Okay. Okay, that's you gotta show me Iskandar's face. I knew that was out of character for him. He would not just go in, kill the girl, not say a single fun line, and leave on foot. That's not what Ryder's about, bro. Okay, fake Ryder, fake Ryder. Good line. See, he's way too excited. Okay, what's going on here? Bullets? Is that Berserker? Okay, Berserker. It could be Berserker. I don't know. And that was magical. It was Black Mist, so I was thinking it might be Berserker. That's why I said Berserker, just because it was black. No, nah, she's chasing the wrong one now. Okay. Z. <laughs> Oh, she upgraded the motorcycle, bro. 
Chariot, go! Lit, get in there. It's a shame you're going the wrong direction. <laughs> Ryder, she's catching up, Ryder! <laughs> Wait, this reminds me of a Hunter Hunter scene. Like, almost verbatim. <laughs> That's funny. It can go off-road! Yeah, exactly, and then, you know, come on now. Or no. A little bit of... <clears throat> Bro, Saber's trying to find Yuri, and Ryder's just playing, like, racing simulator. Bro's play- Ryder's playing Mario Kart? Oh my goodness, animation? Wait, that was kind of lit. Ryder's just trying to play Mario Kart, Saber's trying to save her, uh, Yuri's life. That's crazy right now. See, he's just having a good time. This is why I love this guy. The flower of the battlefield. Damn! Okay! Wielding her sword while she's driving? What'd she just do? Bro, I need to get me one of these motorcycles. Holy crap. She activated the nitro. Oh, she jumped it! <laughs> it was good. <laughs> ooh, ooh, ooh. His blade parried hers. Alright. We're about to notice. She's about to notice that Yuri's not there. Yup. It's just Waver. Who's maybe even a little cuter. Yeah, that's a fake. No, dude, what kind of magic is that? Is that berserker magic or is that or is that um Kire magic? I'm guessing Kire. But we I didn't know that type of magic existed, so that's crazy. <laughs> Waver's too dumb to figure this out. Oh, you think it was okay. No, he because he doesn't know Kirei's in the picture. He doesn't know. Because, no, he's right. It's not the Matawas, then. I don't think it is. Ow. Me when I torture the guy? <laughs> Kirei, yeah. Because the, the real judge is dead. Wait, 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 wait. Team up? What, what's going on? Wait, I'm lost. Yeah, okay. Kirei, are you teaming up with Matawa right now? With Korea? Korea x Kirei? Kire? Wait, what's going on? Ooh, the plot thickens. I am so glad that I wasn't wrong about that. I was going to feel so dumb. Wow, the team up. I did not expect this team up. Two? To get Berserker to transform into a Rider lookalike and then c command. Oh, is he gonna give you more? Oh, bro, Kirei's just starting to troll. This is too dangerous. Now it's Berser Berserker, but with infinite command spells. That's kind of what just happened. That's so OP. That's so OP because that was Berserker's biggest weakness. Holy crap. This is getting so thick. Okay, so it was Berserker and Kirei. That's super cool. Oh, interesting. We still don't get- we still don't know the name. Servant's obsession with Saber. Uh, yeah, they kind of, they kind of alluded to that. With, um, with, when the crack formed and the mask opened. That dialogue was kind of alluding to that saber stuff. The grail vessel? What does that mean? What does that mean? Ha <laughs> ha! 
<laughs> this is getting crazy. Oh, because he wants a piece of that Tokiomi pie. Oh, he didn't tell him. He's trolling everyone. He's trolling everyone. Where's Gilgi? I want Gilgi to spit some bars about how fun he's having. How much fun he's having. Hello? Grandpa Matau? I'm gonna keep saying Matau, I don't care. Moto. Okay, I heard. Sorry. My fault. Zang! You will never catch me with fake writer, bro. I'm so I'm so happy. She needs to ask for areas so they can resolve the uh, miscommunication. Oh, she kicked up the, uh, the leg, the landing gear. I love Waver's character development. Conquer their souls without degrading them. I kind of like that. Me conquering your soul. Thoughts? Aw, they love each other, bro. I love their bond. I'm so glad I chose Waver as my boy in episode one. The Waver stocks are so good. Alright, they're actually fighting. Wow, you're just dropping the nuke on him? Alright, Waver's dead. Well, I loved him. I loved that character. <laughs> Imagine Waver just gets cut in half. Oh my goodness, I'd be so mad. <laughs> I knew he loved that. You're such a dick. This guy's evil. This guy's the worst. This guy's the worst one. He doesn't even want to win. He just wants homeboy to suffer. Wait, are you really going to choose miserable end? No way. Wow, it's a contest for you? You're a monster. That's actually so cringe. You're a sadistic fool like me. Ugh. Bugs. Oh, it was a fake one. It was fake. The worm that walks and he's gone. Spooky. Oh, no, that's Excalibur. That looked like a Neon Genesis Evangelion firing. You know what I mean? <laughs> did you just grab did you just grab Waver and ditch your cart? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that seems about right.
He's more scared of Gilgamesh. She said, I'm busy looking for Eerie. I don't have time to waste on you. All right. Lucky break. I want one. <laughs> he says I want one. <laughs> Okay, that was pretty dumb of Ryder. While injured, he was like, not at full power, he was like, yeah, let's try to head on charge Excalibur. Yeah, that's just not gonna work for you, buddy. <laughs> oh, we gotta walk. <laughs> Dang. Two. Zero. This, this guy, he's like gearing up to fight Tokiomi. He's going to find Tokiomi already dead in like a crazy, like religious rib cage opened up a big smiley face drawn in his blood on the altar. Like, oh, see, look, it's about to happen. Oh, he's sitting there. He's, he's sitting there. He was going to tell him. He was going to tell him. Your prey has been stolen from you. But what do you, why does that make you feel? Organize that. What is going on? That's so insane. He wanted to, but it wasn't him. But either way, she, he didn't want her here. The like only person he he like he would never want to hurt her or either of the daughters. I can't believe, I can't believe Kire did this. I can't believe Kire did this. Kire is, his trolling has gone into, gone too far. He's organizing just pain. What are you about to do to her? What's going on? No, don't hurt her. 
Oh my goodness, is he hurting her? What's going on? Then I might as well... What? I think he just... Did he kill her? What's going on? He's squeezing the life out of her. What is even going on anymore, bro? Dude, Kiede's having way too much fun. I, I'm, I'm, I can't. This guy's a huge problem. I, we're actually, it's over. It's so over. Bro, I swear, like, like, Rin's about to walk in the door, and then Sakura's about to, Gilgamesh is having a great time up there. I knew they would be watching. He said that shit sucked. <laughs> Gilgamesh. You really said, yeah, that was kind of mid. That was kind of mid, but I appreciate it. Let him save her. Let him save her at Gilgamesh. Come on. Again. <laughs> dude, dude, Kira is crazy. That was like one of the, dude, that was like one of the best twists they've had in the show, bro. That was crazy, bro. Her walking in the door, I was not ready for at all. And then he kills her, bro. Because he goes mad that she, she's not, under, she's not like thankful or like, you know that she's like mad at him when he all he's done is suffer. So he takes out all his suffering on her. Bro. I'm freaking like, I, I was insane. Kide's trolling has gotten out of hands. I mean, he's made it, but uh, and now, I mean, now Korea's into an enemy for him again. Like, that that was not a real team up, you know? He was just doing it for that moment to arrange his little sick play. I mean, it was good drama. Like, hey, Kiri, I appreciate you, by the way, dog. I appreciate you trying to make, like, plays, plays, you know? You're, like, writing plays. I'm the audience member, bro. I appreciate it. Me, Gilgamesh, and you, we all want the same thing, entertainment. So, like, I appreciate it. But, man... I'm still on team waiver. You know what I mean? F it. Give it to waiver. I don't care. Kire? Kire's obviously too scary. He's way too... He's a huge villain. Emiya? I, well, what? Would you, I wish there's no more fighting anymore. Brother, what if I'm hungry? I just starve to death? I can't fight somebody else for food? I can't overthrow a, a king? I'm not watching this. Like, I, I don't know. I, I I don't know. You can just... I don't think you can just say no more fighting, right? There's a reason that, like, big wishes usually have big consequences that you're usually not ready for. Type deal. So I actually don't know if I trust you, Emiya. F it. No change. Just live life. Waver. Waver moment. Who cares? Um, holy crap. Her walking in the door is the craziest twist I've seen in a minute. Because it was like that instant moment of, oh my good. But the thing is for me, there was like so many, there was layers to it, bro. There's the the most like obvious layer of, oh, she just, she thinks that he killed Tokiomi and she's going to blame him. And that's going to like, she's incredibly, she's incredibly hurt by this. And he 
d- doesn't want her to be hurt. So there's that there's that whole drama. For me, it was the moment of realization of, oh, Kire is like this. It was it was that that really did it for me. That it's not just that, oh, you are getting hoed and this is like a horribly dramatic, painful moment. My, my what, what really made it cook for me, or not even the strangling. The strangling was great. Like that was all really good. But the moment that made it go like all the way for me was me knowing that Kire organized it. The thought of like, oh, Kire is this crazy. Holy crap. That like, dude, I'm freaking like, oh my goodness. <laughs> What an incredible scene, bro. What an incredible scene. He's, I mean, Korea's been over since the beginning. You know what I mean? He had the worst stock market projection out of every character. He was doomed to fail. You know what I mean? He was never getting a good ending. But for for, for Kire to organize such a horrific ending, way worse than I, what anything I imagined could happen to him, because of homegirl pulling up. Oh my goodness. And he falls and locks eyes with her, bro. The dead corpse. And he's standing there like, wasn't me. <laughs> like, like, dude. And then he strangles her. It was taking Sakura from me not enough. That wasn't his fault, to be fair. But she's, she just, she's seeing her dead, like, what, father, right? So... I'm not going to blame. I'm not going to get mad at her. She's fine. I mean, she's dead now, so she's not fine. And him him pain, being like, it's his fault. Blame him. You're blaming the corpse. <laughs> like, Dude, what's going to happen to you now, Korea? You're still alive. He's just going to feed himself to Berserker, and Berserker's just going to be a dog without a leash. You know what I mean? He's just going to start rapidly attacking everyone. It's going to be a nightmare. She said one line that I kind of missed. You don't understand. I think it was like right here. Some loved anyone. What was the precursor to you've never even loved anyone? Oh, that's what's broke it. I, I thought that's what she said, but I wasn't sure. So I'm glad I checked. You don't even understand a thing about any of this. You've never even loved anyone. Hearing that from the he, dude, hearing that from the girl who you loved and wanted to be happy while you're strangling her. <laughs> me strangling the woman i love after she tells me i never even loved anyone and by her dead dad yeah that's insane the little quick cuts bro that was pretty i liked the quick cuts i was I, at first I, I was like what are they doing but then i i, I man the realization partway through that he's attacking her, but he's blacking out because of his emotions. I think that's kind of what that meant to do, right? And then if I'm going to die, then I might as well. Might as well what? And then he just chokes her out. Kills her. Bro, I actually, dude, what I liked about this scene, me cutting to her, to the girl getting the life choked out of her. What I actually liked a lot about the, this scene, I think was done really well. Like, because the black house, all that kind of thing, all the emotions in the air, right? Oh my goodness. But the, like, the the shot, the shots of this I really liked. Because this is a pretty what you'd expect shot. It's really leaning in. But we were getting, like, like his knee. Like, right here, we were getting, like, an undershot. Which, like, kind of framed her, like, sexually in a way, which is kind of weird. And then it cut to, like, her, her like, him digging her his knee into her. It was, like, it was, like, he was, like, possessing her, bro. I felt like there was, like, an additional overtone to it. Or, like, undertone to it. Like, like, yeah, wait, that's totally a thing, bro. It's totally a thing. It's like, dude, it's like this crazy mix between, like, it's violent, but it's, I think it's also slightly, like, it's, it's, it's at least framed kind of sexually, but I kind of like how they did that. Because they cut to, they cut to this undershot of her, which is, like, very focused on her chest, right? And, you know, they put, they put a little bit of, they put a little bit of animation into it, too, you know? And then it cuts to her, her groin, where he's digging his knee into it, because he's really, you know, up in her space. And then some of her skin is revealed as she's struggling. So there's like, it's like, it's almost like a romantic possessive thing. If it was very like possessive, especially because she just said you never even loved anyone. And so he's like, you don't even know. And so it's like, yeah, I think it's, I think it's like the very dark underbelly of a romantic obsession in a sense, in a sense. I'm kind of being, ab it's a little abstract, right? I don't mean it super literally, but like the thought of, you know, like, 
you've never even loved everyone. There was someone I loved. She was warm. She was kind. I wanted to be happy. I would throw my life away for her. That's why I've endured. I do have someone I love. I definitely have someone I love. Who did I do this all for? Whose fault is it? If I'm going to die, then I might as well. It's like, I might as well just get take what I want, you know? And kill. That's kind of, it's, it's kind of a mixed thing, bro. That was really good. That was a really good scene. That was like a really good scene. Cause yeah, I man, dude, seeing seeing these shots, cause in the moment I was thinking like it's kind of oddly sexually framed, and I and but it works, it works because of the the very violent like dark side of a person, you know? Holy crap, what a scene! At first I was like, oh, I was like taking the scene not seriously at all, bro. I was like, oh, he's gonna get revealed that Tokiomi's actually dead. Who cares? LMAO, you know? Like we already know this. He's gonna be like, oh no, my prey got stolen, you know? I was like not at all like even engrossed that much like you know i was normal i was watching the show normally and then the door reveal and it all the immersion turned on bro i was like oh my goodness like all of a sudden fully locked in i appreciate when a show can lock me in like that okay takes a little bit of a move to lock me in like that and they holy crap they paid off what a freaking moment <sighs> Absolutely, Kirei trolling is the most terrifying thing I've ever seen. I'm still lost. Oh my goodness. Um, yeah, I mean, that's the highlight of this episode easily, bro. Like, there's not even anything else to say. The last episode, I did, I didn't really, was there anything else I wanted to say on last episode? Um, freaking waiver shopping is still the f funniest thing to me, bro. Bro's like, hmm, I'm thirsty, what should I buy? <laughs> freaking waiver. I love Waver. I love his character arc. And then this whole Berserker thing, we're still trying to, we still don't know who he is, but like, we've got a little bit of lore about him. Um, Homegirl dying is still crazy to me. And he still has Eerie. Oh my goodness, he still has Eerie on that roof, huh? Right? Oh my goodness, bro still has Eerie. He's gonna troll. He's gonna he's gonna troll Korea um Emiya so much now. He trolled Korea, now he's gonna troll Emiya. Ooh, do you want to see your wife again? Oh, I'm I have a I have a knife. I'm going to shank your wife. Ooh, ooh, ooh. And step, 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 step. Oh, I got Prisma Illa. She's next. Prisma Illa's about to be, you know, if we're getting <laughs> gonna kill her. Berserker. Transform into Prisma Illa. <laughs> Holy crap. Get the best peak fiction. Peak fiction just dropped. Oh my goodness, bro. I love Gilgamesh and Kirei. They're such they're such fun characters. They're terrifying. They've really grown on me both. They've really grown grown on me both. But yeah, so Eerie's gone. I'm really glad this prediction was not me losing my mind. Um because I think it just, bro, Maya dying threw me off. Because I felt like th this this scene didn't really fully hit for me, you know? Because it was just like, I was like, this, I, I was like, this doesn't make sense, you know? I was like, there's no way you just have her die here. It just, you know? Where it was like, you know, because it's like, what killed her? Ryder kicking in the door? That doesn't make a lick of sense. And then, so what, what actually killed her is Berserker. Berserker probably went, oh, because it's Berserker, so we probably, you know, gave her a quick one-two before grabbing Eerie, and then that's, and she died from her wounds there, so that makes sense, I mean, enough sense, you know, um, I wouldn't be surprised if Kire was like, hey, hey, tell, tell Berserker to mess up, uh, homegirl for me, yeah, you know, I wouldn't be su surprised if Kire was trying to do a little bit trolling, you know, let, let Korea know about that, um, but yeah, so I'm, that, that kind of threw me off, and then on top of the other stuff, which was like, this is obviously not Ryder, you know, there's, I'm way sus about that, but being sus of the show already on top of me being, feeling kind of weird about the death, put me in like a weird spot where I was like, I don't know how much, I feel like I'm just like, you know, so I'm glad it paid off though. Cause it, I'm glad, you know, they were obviously doing something. Um, and if they hadn't been doing something, if that was Ryder, I would have said that that was like mischaracterization and such. And that would have been unfortunate, but it wasn't, it all was well, that ends well. It ended really well. I'm really glad we watched these episodes together because if we didn't, I was probably going to be kind of annoyed about this a little bit. I was going to be like, um, writer, that doesn't make any sense. Come on, writing, writing moment. But no, it actually completely pulled through. Um, wow. It's really going to come down to Emiya and Korea at the end of all, or Emiya and Kire. Kire! At the end of all things. And Kire is trolling everyone. Kire has Eerie. Emiya has nothing, has no one except Saber, who hates him, and he hates Saber. 
because he doesn't have a good relationship with his servant. The only people with good relationships to their servants are, say it with me, Waver and Kyure. Because Kyure and Gilgamesh and Waver or Ryder are feeling real good together, you know? So I think they're the ones that have done the best. And Ryanosuke did too. Ryanosuke did too. And we saw how big of a problem Caster was. Yeah, it's almost like when you're friends with your dude, then they get really, really freaking locked in. You know? I mean, Saber's been doing Ite, but like she's just kind of throwing a couple Excaliburs around, and then overall, you know, they keep butting heads, and it's just not a good look. So yeah, um, I got a feeling nobody's winning. I got a feeling nobody's winning. I think Waver's gonna survive. I, I hope Waver lives. I really hope Waver lives, and Ryder probably is gonna die... And it's going to be a really inspiring death that's going to make Waver into a Giga Chad. Um, Kire is probably going to die laughing as Emiya die, like, is completely devastated. And then Emiya is going to lose, and it'll all have been for nothing, and it'll be a depressing ending. But at least Waver lives, so it's actually an A-plus ending. Yeah, that's why I think it's going to happen. My goodness, what a freaking two episodes. Great two episodes. Really, really good. Two of my favorites. I've been saying it, bro. 21, goaded. Um, end of 19, very liked. And then a lot of these other ones have been really, really fun. So I've been really liking it. But yeah, honestly, y'all, that's all I got for this one. These, this double little feature onto the next episodes, 22, maybe 22, 23. I don't know. I'll have to check. But until then, until the next episodes, that's like, until the next fate Friday, I should say that's all I got for tonight. Of course, of course, of course, if you like the video, like the video, subscribe. If you're new, blah, blah, blah. I'll comment down below if you have anything to say or join the discord and talk to me or other, uh, fate zero fans there. But until then, until the next episode, that's all I got for tonight. I'll be seeing you then. Peace.